Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Presdale, and today I will be smoking the El Septimo Emperor Collection Alexander. And this 6x54 Toro featuring this beautiful banding. They do not disclose their blends, although we do know that this features a Connecticut wrapper on it. And this was sent courtesy of Cigar Hound Dog to the channel. Thank you so much, brother. Always hooking us up with great cigars to smoke. I saw his review. He thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to enjoying this. Off the cold draw, we get some nice creamy notes. As to be expected with the Connecticut wrapper. There is an underlying layer of spice, just in a slight black pepper hint. We're just diving into our El Septimo Alexander, the third Alexander the Great. Emperor Collection Cigar. And so far, just starting off the first third, the ash is very nice and tight. The actual cigar itself is very creamy with a nice amount of cedar to it. Where I said that there was black pepper off the retro on the cold draw and off of the initial pre-lighting or the initial lighting. We maintain those flavors off of the first third. Just a ton of Spanish cedar notes on the palate in collaboration with this slight hint of roasted coffee when you retrohale, and very little pepper. Smooth, creamy, mild to start. Looking forward to see where the cigar picks up and how it develops over time. Alexander the third, and I mean, the burn line, and the ash on this, absolutely gorgeous so far. Flavors still consistent with the cedar. They really haven't had a ton of transition, although in the second third, there was this uptick of this black licorice that I absolutely love. Black licorice, as those of you that eat it, <laughs> or those of you that have eaten it know, is anise, right? Star anise. So that's the flavor that's like underlying, that's trying to like come out and uh, make itself apparent, but the cedar, the star anise, and the, or fennel, and the, uh, the actual creamy notes on the stick, really nice. Slight uptick in more of like a cashew nuttiness as well in the second third. Overall, the blend itself, it's not the most powerful. It's still mild plus, maybe medium at this point, but definitely, definitely really nice at a $15 MSRP. I think that El Septibo, you know, they catch a lot of flack because of the fact that they undisclose all of their blends. They obviously price their cigars a little higher. We've had we had the Botticelli earlier, that's the previous El Septimo that we smoked. We smoked one on the live stream that was amazing, fantastic burn line on that as well. And then, great burn line, but also kind of um, slightly like under... It, it underperformed in comparison to the one on the live, just because of the fact that I felt like maybe it needed to dry box just a little bit longer, and the one on the live had had a little bit more time to acclimate to the humidor. So I'm looking forward to doing the Rembrandt, which is the other El Septimo that I have in my humidor right now, and just kind of seeing for the Sacred Arts collection a comparison between the two, because I obviously had one Botticelli that was amazing, another one that was just so-so, and those are considerably more expensive than the Emperor's collection especially this Alexander at $15 MSRP. So I was going through some of my holiday items that I still had left over from the, the holiday season. And one of the items was boozy macaroons, courtesy of Trader Joe's. You do come across macaroons, especially ones that are infused with booze. I know that it's something that a couple of my friends have put together before. These are actually Cointreau rum and French brandy. The French brandy are the purple. The Cointreau is Cointreau colored, orange, right? And then the rum is the lighter brown. And I thought, how cool would it be, you know, because I've done a chocolate pairing with the Room 101 in the Maduro Toro farce to start the channel. I'll link that up above. But I wanted to pair these with the El Septimo and kind of just see how they go. The lightest in flavor, which was the brandy, that's our purple one. Also a bit easier to keep track of because the fact that brandy comes from grapes, cognac comes from grapes, purple. Complimentary pairing, for sure. As you know, most of the brandies, cognacs out there, they're usually pretty complimentary. Let's go with the rum because I think that, that was the second strongest as far as overall flavor. And from what I remember, the rum was actually my favorite by itself. 
the finish on the macaroon. These aren't like super boozy. They're not like the chocolates that are infused with, li with liqueur or with different liquor and spirits where like you bite into them and there's, uh, there's like a full shot almost. That underlying star anise note that's still present even in the final third as we've concentrated all of these flavors down, mixes with the creaminess of the smoke. The spice has been very well balanced. I mean, all of these are very complimentary, but the French brandy so far beats out the rum. Cointreau macaroon. That tastes <laughs> like the milk left over after you have Fruit Loops, the cereal. I might have to change my my favorite overall macaroon. Oh, and it it brings out all these tropical notes on the cigar, which is really fun. Overall, really fun pairing. Because I mean, when you think about it, right? Macaroons, almond. You add in a little bit of booze, some almond, nuttiness, booze, all those flavors interacting with the cigar. Macaroons should really be paired more with cigars, in my own personal opinion. I think that, you know, you can make so many different styles of macaroon, so many different flavors. Whereas with chocolate, you kind of always have to have either white chocolate, dark chocolate, bittersweet, semi-sweet, whatever, you know, like there's, there's a lot of different flavors that you can infuse with chili and salt and stuff like that. Caramel, obviously, and other confectionery notes. But macaroons, they, you know, they have a lot of nice flavors too. And it's very interesting. It's the first time in a while that I've had macaroon with the cigar. And probably the first time that I can recall that I had a boozy macaroon with the cigar. I think that other pairings that you could do with this cigar Love the West Coast IPA with Connecticut Shade. That is always one of my go-tos as far as the beer side goes. Uh, somebody reached out and they wanted a little bit more non-elk pairings as suggestions. So I do want to contribute more of those. I think that the Hop Water by Lagunitas, if you have not seen those yet, they actually have two flavors in can that they have released. And basically all it is is just hop infused water coming from the brewery. Definitely a five pack worthy stick. I think this is a great showing by El Septimo and I think that these can only get better with age. Would love to see how these develop after a year of aging. I think that they're gonna be fantastic. Just give the, the, give the blend a little bit more time, have it pick up right off the first third, moving into the second third and it's gonna be fantastic. But overall, this has been my review of the El Septimo, Alexander III, Alexander the Great in the Emperor's Collection. Thank you all so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, continuing to grow the community here at Master Your Ash. And I look forward to catching you again for another El Septimo Cigar Review.